The roads are so blinking narrow. Vinny is definitely taller than that trunk that's going right across the road, so we're not going any further and we've got to reverse. So guys, yesterday our little journey into the rainforest failed. We didn't get our walk, even though we had an incredible drive, yeah. little safari through the forest. It was good fun. So now it's the day after. <laughs> and, and we failed again. We failed miserably again. Gutted again. That's twice now in the last day. The rainforest and now this, um, yeah, the second highest cliffs in Europe. Would have been pretty cool, but yeah, we're not going to see that along with a root of Mirador. Sounded quite nice, didn't it? Let's go back down this road, narrow road with our towel between our legs. <laughs> we wanted to visit Costa Artabra, but again, we didn't make it. Yeah, as we said, it was the second highest cliffs. Second highest cliffs think, which in is Europe. Just which we think are those cliffs in the distance. It's like 620 meters, only second to the fjords in Norway. So pretty impressive, but I think it's going to be those ones over there. Yeah, so, so at least we can see it yeah. from here. But anyway, now we're on the north coast and we're just like near a place called Loiba. And a mir Mirador, there's a couple of Miradors here. And the view that we're looking out to right now, it's absolutely outstanding and behind us. So it's just such an amazing coastline, isn't it? You've got these beaches, there's like a path and walking track down there, but generally they look like they're only accessed. By, um, by sea or like a rough track going down, yeah. but it's very rugged, it's very wild, it's very dramatic coastline, it's just awesome. It's just beautiful, all the little rocky out, jaggedy, jaggedy rocky, jaggedy out, rocky outcrops things going out, out to sea. sea. So yeah, it's pretty impressive. So yes, we've been exploring this beautiful coastline. It's pretty incredible, really. Um, and it's really, really quiet. There's hardly anybody yeah. here, really, is yeah. there? And obviously this is due to COVID, mm. we believe. Um, and what's quite, I mean, there's not many motorhomes and vans full stop, is there, really? No. really. And the only ones we have seen are uh, local plates. Only. Which, which is unusual because normally that Spanish plated um, motorhomes are the minority and totally. now it's pretty much just them. The only ones we see and a lot of those are higher ones as well so mm. it's probably people who instead of going and stay at hotels and things on their holidays they're hiring yeah. motorhomes. But I mean I, I we we're just saying I don't think we've seen one British a uh, UK plate um, van since, literally one maybe yeah since the whole time since over the last couple of months. A few which, Germans a few Germans, there's like one place we stopped where there's just like three or four Germans and that's it, I think. That's really. it. So it's, it's just so, so quiet, which is obviously brilliant time, brilliant for us to travel because mm. it's nice when it's quiet, isn't it? And you get everything to yourself, as you know, Nick and I like to have places to ourselves. Um, yeah, but obviously it's kind of just crazy, isn't it? It's just... It's, just... it's, cr it's crazy the travelling in 2020 with this pandemic going on because obviously, yeah, if you've been following us, you know that we like to explore nature and sort of go out on our own. But occasionally we do like to get a bit of culture and go into a city and um and that's that's all changed now like yeah. um, we we've been to one i think on this trip so far and um and yeah i don't know how many we'll go to really because it's that's obviously where the main hot spots are where yeah. the main virus is and when we went into casares back in uh, extremadura 
Yeah. Um, it wasn't too bad because it was quite quiet. We're not scared to go into cities, obviously, but it just doesn't seem right going into built-up areas. And um, and yeah, it's funny. Sometimes you do get some funny looks, really. Obviously, some people are thinking these people are traveling around in a motorhome. Oh, I've noticed band. that people always glance down at your number plates. Yeah. Loads now. You know, mm. see us come in. Obviously, I don't probably look Spanish. Mm. So they kind of must clock us and then look at the plates. Yeah. So you kind of feel like if we didn't have Spanish plates, there might be, you know, a bit funny towards us traveling around. I and mean, they're not shy about it as well. They'll walk past the front of the van and just look down. <laughs> 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 but then it's kind of understandable because, you know, everyone, some people have, have had it really hard. And of been course, in it's lockdown. totally understandable at the moment. And they think, well, why are these people just, you know, freely traveling around, spreading the virus? Probably not thinking that, but, you yeah. know, when you go into a city as well, you know, you like to see a bit of hustle and bustle, a bit of life. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's a bit lonely and a bit yeah. weird going into a city and all these restaurants or even small towns. Well, lots like, of places are closed, aren't they? Sad. Which is really sad. Yeah. But obviously we just hope that this doesn't go on for too much longer. But another thing is when you wear it, because you have to wear masks all the time here. Nick and I were talking about the, the whole mask thing, weren't we? Yeah. So we don't really... <laughs> when we go into the countryside, hiking and things, we, we you know, we don't have it on. And, and other people don't have it on. You've got it with you, ready to put on if you see anyone, of course. Because obviously cities, built up areas, you wear it all the time. Yeah. But when you're in the countryside and you don't see anyone, do you do you wear it? Do you have it on you? So we, we've been on, like, walk along the cliff walk. So it's just me and Sarah and we're walking. We've got our mask all around our chin in case we see someone. You'll see someone coming towards you um, and then just as you'll come up to them, you'll put your mask on and you'll see, oh, oh and they haven't got a mask. So they've got, oh, they've got it in their pocket so they quickly get it out and they put it on or they... Or they turn or away Or they like turn this. away and just, just <laughs> cover their faces. And it's, and it's like this. and we, we kind of like play this little game looking at people's reactions, the whole mask wearing or not mask wearing. So you keep, it's like a game of chicken. You keep your mask down and you get closer. You quickly put it up and then like, oh, oh, buddy, what, what? It's so <laughs> weird, isn't it? It's just so weird now, the world we're living in with the whole mask situation and things. We, you still can't... I mean, we don't get... We're still not used to it. We still quite often walk out of the van and mm. start walking down the street without one on, you know, and we have to wear it all the time. So, oh, gosh, run back, grab the mask. We just cut it in half. Yeah, and one person just cut it in half. You know? <laughs> Put your hoodie over your mouth or something. Yeah. It's a crazy world we live in, but you just got to make the best of it. So anyway, guys, we are still planning on coming back to the UK. We're keeping, it's like a regular thing now to check the news at night. I'm checking several times a day. Yeah. Obviously the UK situation, I think Wales has just gone into lockdown, hasn't it, last week? Well, yeah. An island yeah, for a month until Scotland, December. They've got a big restriction. So, I mean, we really don't know if we're going to be able to come back literally going to be able to come back will the borders be closed but anyway we'll just have to continue to see how the situation goes here in Spain everything's still open apart from the one uh, province not province um, the region I think Navarra mm. which is in the north east isn't it so basically near the border where that's, we are. that's gone into lockdown for like two weeks so apart from that I think it's all still yeah. open at the moment well we are like galicia asturias and cantabria aren't too bad and yeah. then as you go further over they've so got the, the lowest amount of cases yeah. so we're just keeping on news and all that sort of thing day but... by day it's all day by day isn't it but anyways enough chit chat um, yes sorry to go on about covid <laughs> i know no one probably really wants to talk about it that much but it's here it's happening isn't it so so yes um now we are going to continue our journey along this, this beautiful, coastline. beautiful coastline and see where we end up. Charlie where are we is that the most northern point in Spain yes we made it we weren't actually going to come here we weren't planning to come here but we're here now really nice night last night with a lighthouse doing its thing stars in the sky unfortunately couldn't film it because we haven't got a low light camera but we will have in the future <laughs> we will invest in ones because we'd love to do a bit of night photography wouldn't we mm. but anyway yeah so we spent the night here 
northern tip of Spain. Well, actually, this is the most northerly point in Spain. Well, actually, technically, it's that little tiny rock right out of sea there that's the uh, most northerly point but we're not going on that <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing like what do you call it stepping stones yeah <laughs> to get to that so yeah as you can see guys this is a pretty amazing location and the van is parked about a kilometer about, about a kilometer that way there's a yeah. beautiful lighthouse there but apart from that you've just got cliffs either side and this little rocky ledge sticking out yeah that you can you walk a uh, walk across to and it's just amazing views down the coast again both ways and uh, and there's no wind there's no which wind. is incredible <laughs> we read that it gets quite windy here but today there's just nothing um yeah so quite nice doing this little walk and and reaching the most northerly point mm. We had a lovely day yesterday exploring this rugged coastline, all these cliffs dropping down to the ocean, going down these crazy winding narrow roads. Wouldn't recommend it in a motorhome probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, beautiful drive, stopping off at loads of different viewpoints. Um, really, really nice. And that brings us to where we are now. So um, yes, I have been promising to share with you guys the crumpet pit recipe and um, it'd be really bad of me if I didn't. So today is the day. Hopefully it's going to turn out all right. Right guys, so here we go. I'm not filming the whole process. So the actual ingredients are quite straightforward. So 150 grams of flour go in the bowl first. Warm water, 200 grams, one teaspoon of salt. Whisk it quite hard, like have a real good whisk for about three minutes. Then you do your yeast mixture. So one teaspoon of yeast, tablespoon of hot water, dissolve that. And then that, along with a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of baking powder goes into the main bowl. Again, whisk crazily for about another 30 seconds. And then you need to cover the bowl and keep it in a really warm place for about half an hour before cooking. So the ingredients and all that part is quite straightforward, right? And when I first originally started making the crumpets and we were doing it Extremadura when it was like, I don't know, 35 degrees plus, they worked out perfectly, probably because of the heat. Oh my God, it's a giant crumpet. Look at the size of that. It feels totally like a crumpet. That Eddie? is definitely crumpet-like. Let's go, let's go. Guys, not just saying that, that is seriously good. Now I've tried to make this since and it hasn't worked out perfectly every time. I think it's because it's too cold and you need to leave it in half an hour in a warm place. So they've been kind of either a little bit flat or not quite cooked in the middle. So it is like tinkering and messing about with it and it's all good fun, isn't it? Because when they're cooking, it's good fun watching all the little bubbles pop and things like that. So let's see how this one goes. I'm feeling a little bit nervous because I'm telling you about it now and we're filming it and I'm kind of giving you the recipe. So if it doesn't work out perfect, or oh, really good I'm gonna be a bit disappointed but you know it's all trial and error this one's looking quite good but it doesn't look like it's risen up as much as other ones so I mean generally this the crumpets are small aren't they They're this size and because we don't have any rings to put them this size it's making the big ones every time so I think they'd work think a lot better be right. if they were smaller I think it would work a lot better if they're smaller but you know we don't do anything easy in this van do we mm. Once you've got that mixture and left it for half an hour, then you heat oil in a pan. I've used olive oil. You could use butter, I suppose, or any sort of vegetable oil. And then um, get that oil quite hot and then pour that mixture in. Now there's a fine line here as well because you don't want to burn the bottom of the crumpet. 
and you need to wait until all of those bubbles have popped and it turns into, you know, a crumpet. So you kind of just have to play with the heat a little bit, turn it up, if you see smoke at the sides, turn it down, maybe take it off the heat for a moment and then put it back on. Now also, I'm getting quite hot because, I didn't, did I just mention that we've left the heater on this morning? It's not that cold outside, but we put the heater on, on purpose, so we could keep the crumpet mixture warm. So I think we'll turn that off now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm wearing jogging bottom. The vent's there. And I'm sweating. I know, let's turn it off. So that's pretty much ready now. Um, it hasn't risen as much as I would have liked, but it looks quite crumpet like. And now we're going to just flip it over to like toast it on the top because we're going to eat this straight away. Because it's all of this is now set, so we can flip it over. Ooh, looking good. Nice color, golden. Yeah, it has worked out quite good, I think. So we'll just get it a nice bit of a golden color on the top and then we'll enjoy it. So there you go guys, that's like the quick kind of quick recipe of these crumpets and just uh, just play around with them really. But heat, I think heat is the main thing, isn't it? And quite important, but just have fun with it. Have fun, we always have yeah. fun cooking in the van, don't we? Always have fun trying the and meals we've, we've at created, We've created a central Spain um, in the summer environment in here. It's really hot in here <laughs> so <laughs> to try nice. and get it it's right. So nice. So, um, so yeah, but um, anyway, we're going to enjoy our crumpet and then we're going to enjoy our day because today is a really nice day, isn't it? Yeah, so we've got some good days coming up. So yeah, very excited. Yeah, so you'll see what we get up to in these days coming up in the next vlog. So um, hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching guys. Have fun with the crumpets. And uh, we'll see you all really, really soon. Take care. Great day. Oh, oh no, oh, it's gone down the crack. Oh no, oh no. He can't, he'll never get it out, does he?